There is nowhere on earth so synonymous with the word dinosaur than the Hell Creek Formation. If you haven't heard of the name, you will have definitely heard of its dinosaurian fauna. Go ahead and picture prehistory in the briefest sense. The image that will no doubt be brought to many of your minds is that classic picture of a Tyrannosaurus atop a mountainside, scouring over its cycad-strewn tropical domain. Perhaps a herd of Triceratops, ambling slowly by a meandering river in the background. Thick forests and open floodplains dominate the landscape, and a large as dark a pterosaur or two fly overhead. That's a section of the famous Hell Creek Formation, located in what is now a central northern section of the United States of America. Specifically, segments of Montana, Wyoming, and the Dakotas. Today, Hell Creek is a dramatic enough landscape as it is, without the prehistoric context. Aerial photos of the formation will show a jagged landscape of huge rocks and cliffs jutting out into the sky, amidst sparse forests and fields underneath a wide open sky. It looks very different to the Hell Creek of 66 million years earlier. There's a reason we're focusing on this location in prehistory specifically though. The Hell Creek Formation is famous for containing the fossils of North America's very last dinosaurs, the ones that would have been alive to experience the cataclysmic mass extinction event that put an end to their entire kind. Some of the rocks are even young enough to topple over the Cretaceous-Paleocene boundary into the beginning of the Cenozoic era, the time when the world was dominated by small mammals, reptiles, and birds that survived the asteroid impact and subsequent disasters. Today, we will be taking an in-depth look at this spectacular point in Earth's history, delving deep into the 66 million year old claystone to discover the dinosaurs and other prehistoric creatures that called this expansive floodplain home. Sit back and enjoy as we take you on a safari through the Hell Creek Formation. Firstly, Hell Creek was warm, much warmer than today's northern states. In fact, it was subtropical in climate, and where today you might find bison, bears, and moose parading over the mountainous grasslands of Wyoming, you would have been met with crocodilians, turtles, and dinosaurs if you were to turn the clock back 66 million years. Primarily, Hell Creek was an open floodplain, with large rivers cutting through huge swaths of low-lying land. Forests were present here too, and supported a huge diversity of extinct life. These forests were mainly composed of laurel, beech, sycamore, and palm trees. Grass had not yet taken over the undergrowth, and in its place, ferns and mosses grew. It's those palm trees that initially helped scientists to discern the climate of Hell Creek, noting that they must have needed subtropical conditions at the least to grow in strong numbers. The formation itself was defined in 1907, and the largest fossil collection of items unearthed at Hell Creek can be found at the Museum of the Rockies in Montana. The collection boasts some of the most iconic dinosaur species ever uncovered, including both Tyrannosaurus rex and Triceratops horridus, as well as claystone. The geology of Hell Creek is composed of mainly mudstones and sandstones, deposited by fluvial activity at the end of the Cretaceous period. A wide variety of dinosaur specimens have been discovered in the Hell Creek Formation, 
and nowhere else on Earth can you expect to find such an iconic set of fossil species. The first thing you might notice if you were to travel back 66 million years in time to end Cretaceous Montana is its diversity of large Ornithischian dinosaurs. Ornithischians being the colossal group of largely herbivorous bird-hipped dinosaurs, which included the Ceratopsians, Ornithopods, and Stegosaurs. You would notice not only the diversity, but the sheer number of iconic species present in a single place at one time. Let's start with one many of you will recognize, the spectacular Pachycephalosaurus. This bipedal ornithischian, famous for its thick, domed skull, is often depicted as a rather small creature, at least against some of its gigantic contemporaries. But, this powerful animal was still four meters in length, from nose to tail tip. That dome skull was the most striking and distinguishable feature of Pachycephalosaurus, and it's definitely what, for most of us, will immediately come to mind when you think of this dinosaur. As behavior is very difficult for scientists to determine, just by looking at fossilized bone, it is hard to say exactly what the purpose of this solid bone skull was. But, it is likely to have served as some form of weapon, at least for competing with conspecific males. It's a common sight to see Pachycephalosaurus males depicted smashing their skulls into one another to compete for territory or mates, almost like a dinosaurian musk ox or bighorn sheep. There might be an issue with this theory, however. It's unlikely given the thickness of these skulls, that Pachycephalosaurus could have sustainably lived like this without quickly taking long-term brain damage. Two four-meter-long animals, smashing their heads together at high speeds, could have inflicted serious wounds after a while, and the skull specimens known to science aren't scarred or damaged enough to back this theory up conclusively. Alternatively, then, it was suggested that Pachycephalosaurus did use its skull as a weapon, but not for head-to-head -head combat. Instead, they may have practiced flank butting, where two individuals stood either face to side or parallel to one another, bellowing and displaying before headbutting the other in the torso. This may have been powerful enough to damage the loser of the fight, but the blow would have been soft enough on the attacker's head to ensure that no long-term damage was self-inflicted. This would also account for the lack of scars on the unearthed specimens. The existence of two other pachycephalosaurs in Hell Creek has long been debated. Dracorex and Stygimoloch. Surprisingly, it looks like these dinosaurs may actually have been specimens of Pachycephalosaurus, unearthed at various stages of development. It is theorized that the dinosaurs were born with flat heads and grew the iconic domed skulls as they reached adulthood. For now, the closest Hell Creek relative of Pachycephalosaurus was Sphaerophilus. Half the size of their cousins, these two-meter pachycephalosaurs likely inhabited dense forests and woodlands surrounding the lands composing Hell Creek. One of the largest herd animals of Hell Creek was Edmontosaurus, a huge 12-meter hadrosaur whose specimens are extremely common in the area. This giant herbivore was among the biggest of Hell Creek's fauna and likely lived in groups along Hell Creek's coastal plains, where it could roam the land on either two legs or all four. Edmontosaurus was in fact an incredibly widespread species, with fossils known from Canada as well as Hell Creek. 
it was most likely a grazer, as proposed by Williams et al., most notably due to the extensive wear and tear on its frequently replaced tooth batteries. This wear and tear would have been developed from the dinosaur chewing on rough plant material that grew closer to the ground, as well as damage inflicted from abrasive soil and stones caught up in the vegetation. A fascinating insight into Edmontosaurus' behavior is also known to science. This animal is likely to have lived in large herds or communal groups, likely for defense in numbers against the region's large theropod predators. Large numbers of Edmontosaurus remains from separate individual animals have been unearthed in the same locations, leading scientists to conclude that these animals lived and ultimately died side by side. In fact, much of Edmontosaurus's biology is rather closely known. We've even found evidence of cancerous tumors present on these dinosaurs' remains. And we know that Edmontosaurus would have had a very small brain relative to its large size. Any time traveler to Lake Cretaceous, Wyoming, would surely be delighted to stumble across an Ankylosaurus. This large, powerful denizen of Hell Creek is without a doubt one of the most iconic creatures to ever grace our planet's prehistory, well known even to the most casual dinosaur enthusiast as a heavily armored titan with bony plates and ossicles running in rows down the length of its body. This roughly 8-meter-long ornithischian dinosaur even had a heavily armored head Solid spikes and rough skin protected it from almost any and all attackers. But this wasn't a creature that focused just on defense. Famously, Ankylosaurus is known primarily for the huge bony club that tipped its powerful tail. This was a formidable weapon, one that would have been used to seriously debilitate an oncoming attacker or to fight with other members of its own species over territory or the right to mate. A common scene from paleoart over the years depicts a hungry Tyrannosaurus attempting to make a meal out of an Ankylosaurus, only to find itself with a broken leg after biting off more than it can chew with this compact, tank-like animal. Their tails would actually have been surprisingly flexible, probably swinging from left to right at a 100 degree angle, able to smash into the flank, face, or limbs of an assailant or rival. Of all the dangerous creatures that resided in Hell Creek, Ankylosaurus was very close to the top of the list of ones that should have been left well alone. Ankylosaurus's closest Hell Creek relative was a dinosaur described in 1988, Denversaurus. Although they were related, Denversaurus was a nodosaurid, not an ankylosaurid, but the two shared various common features. Denversaurus was still heavily armored, but its osteoderms were smaller and it had more. It also made greater use of its bony spikes, which were situated down its flanks and neck. It lacked the powerful tail club of Ankylosaurus and was also a smaller dinosaur overall, albeit only just. No video on Hell Creek would be complete without mentioning its Ceratopsian dinosaurs, those being the famously large, bulky, horned and often frilled dinosaurs. In this case, Hell Creek was home to two world-famous heavy hitters, the spectacular Taurosaurus and the iconic Triceratops. Taurosaurus was, in fact, at one point thought to be a juvenile Triceratops and therefore not a valid genus. But recent studies have proved that it is not only a different species, but the genus in itself is very much valid. 
both dinosaurs possessed spectacular frills, which were likely used for display purposes, laid in with vibrant, flashy colors that would have warded off attackers or attracted mates. At the forefront of the dinosaurs were three long, sharp horns that may have been used to wound would-be predators or to spar with rivals. They broke off tough strands of vegetation with their powerful beaks and would have likely lived in large family groups. One species of Triceratops, Triceratops horridus, was given a name that roughly translates to horrible three-horned face, when surely, in reality, witnessing herds of these vibrantly colored rhinoceros-like giants ambling across the plains and hills would have been one of the most beautiful sights in all of nature. These creatures' heads alone, making up a third of their entire body length, would have been a substantially spectacular sight unlike nothing else in modern nature. Triceratops would have been one of the very last genera of non-avian dinosaurs alive in the Mesozoic, and would certainly have been around to witness the catastrophic KPG extinction 66 million years ago. The diversity of the Ornithischian dinosaurs of the Hell Creek Formation was matched by only one other group of creatures present at the time, the theropods. Fossils can take years to discover and unearth, with painstaking archaeological excavations taking place over extended periods of time. This means that the fossils themselves are incredibly valuable, and not just for their historical value, one famous example is Stan, a T-Rex skeleton that sold for over $30 million back in 2020. That's not something most of us can afford, but thanks to today's sponsor, Masterworks, it's possible for people like you and me to invest in million-dollar collectibles for a fraction of the price. Maybe we can't buy an entire T-Rex skeleton, but we can invest in works of art. So how does it all work? Masterworks is a groundbreaking fintech startup in NYC's financial district. They authenticate and buy multi-million dollar paintings, then securitize them with the SEC, which allows almost anyone to invest in shares of iconic art from legends like Picasso, Monet, and Banksy art that can have really incredible returns. In the last 12 months alone, Masterworks has delivered tens of millions of dollars to their investors, and these results have caught the attention of Forbes, CNN, CNBC, and more. Demand has reached the point where Masterworks is looking to acquire new art every week. Over 617,000 people have signed up so far, the good news is that you can claim your own free, no-obligation account at the link in the description. Hell Creek was also notorious for hosting some of the very last and most famous theropod dinosaurs. The theropods were famously the bipedal, usually predatory group of dinosaurs prevalent across the Mesozoic many of which were feathered. Various groups were represented at Hell Creek, but one of the strangest were surely the Cynignathids. These heavily feathered, turkey-like dinosaurs were not usually particularly big, but there were certain exceptions. Hell Creek's Cynignathids consisted of Anzu, a relatively large species with a prominent head crest that may have made it look superficially like a cassowary, a small group of flightless birds from Southeast Asia and Northern Australia. Also present at Hell Creek was the much smaller Leptorhynchus, whose head crest was less prominent than its Anzu cousins. These creatures were oviraptorosaurs, 
a group related to the peculiar Asian genera, Oviraptor. A very famous creature once thought to prey on other dinosaurs' eggs. It's likely that Hell Creek scenic nathids wandered through the forest undergrowth, away from the open plains, perhaps gathering in large numbers to display and nest like modern-day pheasants or grouse. Some of the other forest theropods were a little more dangerous. True dontids lived here too. The swift, slender, possibly nocturnal bipedal carnivores that may have hunted in small packs together in the forests. Pectinodon was one such trudontid, a species shorter in height than the average human, but possessing a long, tapering tail, which made it look much larger than it was. These creatures, with their powerful eyesight, feathered bodies, and powerful hind limbs, would have leapt through the dark undergrowth with ease, perhaps in pursuit of early mammals, ornithischian dinosaurs, or small reptiles. Also present at Hell Creek was the Trudontid Peronicodon, a relatively rare dinosaur known only from its teeth. Sharp and curved, we know that these dinosaurs were Trudontids by the form of their teeth, which will have been used to cut and tear flesh out on the plains and edges of the woodland lived large groups of herd-living theropods, the ornithomimids. Two species were present at Hell Creek, ornithomimus and struthiomimus, both similar in general form and function, but were likely easily discernible from one another in life when observing the vibrant patterns of their display plumages. Ornithomimus and Struthiomimus, respectively, translate to bird mimic and ostrich mimic, and the latter provides a good bit of insight into what these dinosaurs look like. Long necks, large eyes, tall high limbs, and a heavy coating of feathers would have made these creatures look like large reptilian ostriches, which would likely have been capable of running at speeds at almost 40 miles per hour. These dinosaurs were roughly as tall as an ostrich and would have possibly lived quite like one. These creatures were suited to a largely herbivorous lifestyle, able to peck and browse at bushes and vegetation across the expansive Hell Creek landscape, but would also have been quite happy to consume insects and small vertebrates such as mammals and reptiles. They may also have picked at eggs and crustaceans when food sources were scarce. They were adapted to running at high speeds for short bursts of time, likely to escape ambushes from some of the larger, deadlier theropods of the region. Popular paleomedia has often depicted these creatures living in large family groups for safety in numbers against dinosaurs such as Tyrannosaurus. One group of creatures that many of Hell Creek's dinosaurian fauna needed to constantly be aware of were dromaeosaurs. Those stealthy, lean predators covered in feathers and equipped with sickle-like claws on each foot. Famous dromaeosaurs from across the world include the world-famous Velociraptor. But Hell Creek was home to two species that were undoubtedly bigger and deadlier. In the woods, the small but deadly Augiroraptor stalked its prey. This dromaeosaur is only known from jaw and tooth fragments. But even from just those, scientists can paint a good picture of what this theropod looked like and how it lived. This dinosaur likely stalked the branches and undergrowth of Hell Creek's forests, dropping or leaping silently onto prey before they could realize the danger. Small dinosaurs, eggs, mammals, and reptiles were likely fair game for an Achiroraptor on the hunt. Out on the plains, or perhaps the verges of the forest, lived a much larger dromaeosaur, however. 
Dakota Raptor, described in 2015, was about five and a half meters in length and would have been adapted to bringing down much larger prey, perhaps ornithomimids or large ornithischians. It was likely one of the only Howl Creek dinosaurs capable of holding its own against an ankylosaurus or a triceratops and would have been a swift and agile adversary for any dinosaur it stalked. Despite the fact that these dinosaurs were covered in feathers, flight would have been a certain impossibility. Due to their size, they would not have been able to generate enough lift to leave the ground. Rather, they relied on their hind legs to launch them through the undergrowth and across the plains, whereas the feathers were most probably used for display purposes perhaps to allow other members of the same species to identify individuals or to communicate or display to mates. Towering over Hell Creek, at almost 4 meters tall and 12 and a half meters in length, stood the most famous prehistoric creature ever to live, Tyrannosaurus. One of the largest predators ever to walk the earth, Tyrannosaurus headed up the food web in Hell Creek's ecosystem and would have been a truly formidable hunter. Triceratops would have likely been a primary food source, but Edmontosaurus and Ankylosaurus were also readily taken. Juvenile Tyrannosauruses would have taken smaller dinosaurs, such as the swift theropods or Pachycephalosaurus, and may even have been prey themselves to dinosaurs such as Dakota Raptor. As stereotypical as it is, it's an awe-inspiring thought to imagine an adult Tyrannosaurus storming out of the tree line toward an unsuspecting herd of Triceratops, picking off an old or wounded member of the group before exchanging bites and horn blows with one another. It's an image that has been seared into the minds of each and every dinosaur enthusiast on the planet at some point in our lives, and to this day remains a massive draw for those interested in paleontology. The thought that scenes like this once took place on our planet is astounding to say the least. As intimidating as Tyrannosaurus likely was, it's important to remember that it wasn't some mad, violent demon of a creature. It was an organism in the same way that modern-day lions and tigers are. The public generally fear today's top predators, but we know they don't spend their entire lives mindlessly killing. Many are good parents, social creatures, and highly intelligent. There is no reason to think that the same wouldn't apply to Tyrannosaurus, and it likely displayed a whole host of strange and wonderful behaviors that the fossil record simply does not preserve. Either way, they were certainly amazing creatures that deserve to be looked in a more complex light than we typically do today. As it goes with each and every ecosystem, Hell Creek was home to a whole host of other non-dinosaurian species that functioned in many bizarre and spectacular ways. Many of these creatures were recognizable when compared to their modern-day descendants. Plenty of Hell Creek's non-dinosaurian fauna, or at least representatives of their respective families, would successfully persist into the Paleocene, surviving the mass extinction triggered by the Chicxulub asteroid impact 66 million years ago. On the final stop of this tour through time, let's explore some of the strange creatures that lived in and around the Hell Creek Formation's delicate and intricate ecosystem. On top of the dinosaurian fauna of Hell Creek, Two undescribed species of pterosaur have been unearthed over the years. One of these species is an undetermined species of Asdarkid, the giant pterosaurs that famously include the magnificent Quetzalcoatlus and Hatsikopteryx. 
scientists are still unsure whether or not the bones discovered in Hell Creek may actually belong to specimens of Quetzalcoatlus itself, which would add yet another classic species to a formation that is already packed full of prehistoric icons. The thought of a fully grown Quetzalcoatlus specimen soaring across a landscape strewn with herds of Triceratops and Edmontosaurus truly is something for the mind to behold. The second species of pterosaur is even less well known. We still, to this day, don't really know which family of pterosaur this specimen belongs to, throwing even more mystery into the mix. Meanwhile, in Hell Creek's slow-flowing waters, another group of much more recognizable reptiles were making a name for themselves, the crocodilomorphs. Three species are known from across Hell Creek, the huge Borealosuchus, which may have closely resembled a modern-day Nile crocodile, Brachycampsa, a species related to modern alligators, which, at three meters long, would have easily been able to snatch small dinosaurs from the riverbank, and the slender-snouted Thoracosaurus, a crocodilian related to modern-day gharials. These would have been three reasons for creatures large and small to be wary around the water's edge. Many powerful crocodilians likely gathered in large numbers along the water's edge and in the shallow river sections, waiting patiently to draw unlucky or unwary terrestrial creatures to a watery grave. Over 20 species of turtle are also known from the Hell Creek fossil beds, a huge variety that would have shared the waters with the three species of crocodilomorphs. These turtles, both large and small, represented a large number of different taxonomic families and ecological niches that wouldn't have been too dissimilar from the species we're used to seeing in rivers and lakes in the modern day. Some of these species, for freshwater turtles, were huge. Bacillimus and Axistemus, for example, were giants, the latter of which was a huge relative of modern-day soft-shelled turtles. Cedrobina, on the other hand, was quite the opposite. At roughly the size of a human head, it probably wouldn't have seemed too out of place amongst its 21st century cousins. In the forests and rocky outcrops of Hell Creek lived many reptiles from the order Squamata, commonly known as lizards and snakes. Many of these species would have been recognizable as lizards and snakes, and generally didn't change much throughout the Cenozoic. Among the lizard stock of Hell Creek, lived relatives of monitor lizards, early whiptails, primitive skinks, a legless lizard, and a bearded lizard. Extinct families were present too. Several species of relatively unremarkable lizards and snakes that would have hidden amongst the forest floor either out of sight of predatory dinosaurs or lying in wait for prey to come to them. As we travel closer to the coastline, we know that undetermined species of huge 11-meter-long mosasaurs, closely related to lizards and snakes, also resided in the waters off the coast of Hell Creek. But, for the time being, little is known specifically about the exact identity of these gigantic marine reptiles. As for the snakes, they are substantially less well-known and fewer in number. We do know that our earliest species of boa lived in Hell Creek, a snake which is as of yet unnamed. This constrictor would have resembled its modern-day cousins, perhaps preying on young dinosaurs or mammals. Speaking of mammals, Hell Creek had several species. Many of these mammals were small, the largest true mammal to evolve before the Cenozoic was roughly the size of a small domestic dog. 24 species from 10 genera are known, and they are all multi-tuberculates, 
an extinct order of mammals that were very similar to modern rodents. Many of these species would have been unobtrusive and skittish, hiding in the undergrowth of the dense forests on the verge of the rivers and floodplains. A modern-day time traveler to Hell Creek would likely step right over one of these small, scurrying creatures without giving it a second thought. But one of these lineages of creatures would have eventually, millions of years later, led to the advent of primates, who would ultimately lead to the humans that would go on to become you and I. For the time being, these creatures were indeed small, however, and likely lived in the shadows of the dinosaurs that ruled the entire world. Their time, however, was coming. Somewhere off in the vast reaches of space, the Chicxulub asteroid was hurtling towards the planet at thunderous speed, marking the end of the reign of dinosaurs and beginning the reign of the mammals. Hell Creek seems like a fitting final chapter to the most majestic Animalian dynasty. Figuratively and literally, the dinosaurs went out with a bang. The spectacular megafauna reptiles that walk these lands were among the most amazing creatures ever to walk the planet throughout its entire natural history, let alone just the Mesozoic era. Nowhere else in prehistory can such a massive array of truly iconic species be found. Huge herds of Triceratops, intertwined with the family groups of Edmontosaurus, roaming across a dramatic landscape of plains and forests. Mighty rivers, cutting through the landscape, containing a vast array of turtle and crocodile species, the latter waiting to ambush prey like a bizarre prequel to the modern African savannas. In the woods, our early ancestors likely dodged attacks from giant dromaeosaurs, who, when they couldn't catch an easy meal, perhaps banded together to bring down ornithomimids. Armored oddities, such as Ankylosaurus and Pachycephalosaurus, wandered the land competing for mates with outlandish display rituals, smashing into one another to win a female's affection. Towering above everything was Tyrannosaurus, the most famous prehistoric creature ever to live, which would have really earned the name Tyrant Lizard as it commanded respect from every creature it shared Hell Creek with. It's also important to take into mind that we haven't discovered everything that Hell Creek has to offer. Among the rocks will lie unexcavated treasures, ones that will shine more light on what we already know, or ones that will bring new species to the table entirely. All we can do is sit and wait for that day to come. There are plenty of reasons why Hell Creek is a particularly interesting snapshot in time for experts and enthusiasts alike. But the sheer iconic nature of this fossil site is what really draws in the crowds. If you're wanting to expand your knowledge of dinosaurs or even prehistory in general, Hell Creek is an excellent starting point. Synonymous with the word prehistory or even dinosaur, Hell Creek has well and truly earned its status as the most famous fossil location on the planet.